record this. If you don't like that idea, you can bail at this time. All right. Okay, uh, so uh, with that, uh, we'll begin our town hall number four from the Highland Park Improvement Club rebuilding team. Um, we like to start our meetings with the land acknowledgement. We'd like to acknowledge um, that we are on Duwamish tribal land, the land of the, of the, um, the um, traditional peoples of this area who are our good neighbors and um, generous friends to the, to the HPEC. Um, I also want to throw out a date for people to jot in their calendars right now, save the date June 25th for our big um, commemorative event that we'll be holding, which I don't really know what it is because I'm not planning it, but um, it's, uh, that's the anniversary of the fire. So I'm sure it's gonna be an exciting uh, project and stay tuned, you'll get more information about that in your inboxes as that comes to, to fruition. So meanwhile, our task tonight is to um, uh, provide guidance and also just um, revel in the design work of um, Whitman Estes. So we are joined tonight by Matt and Jody, um, who are waving at you there, um, who have uh, been hard at work and have created um, a, a vision for uh, what we can uh, create for the, for the um, HPIC for the, our next 100 years of use. Um, tonight's um, uh, slideshow will be schematics of their vision of the building. Um, the schematic design is the first step in the design process. That's where they've taken all of our input and kind of the space related needs uh, that we've talked about in many meetings and focus that down into sort of a concrete, semi-concrete um, vision. So, what we took away from all of the process was um, folks wanting to simplify the process level as much as possible. So that's why we'll just be seeing basically one footprint today. Um, so we're trying to improve and speed up the timeline to when we can reopen the building. Um, we're trying to improve the access to the exterior spaces, the courtyard and other outdoor spaces on the property. Um, we'd like to provide a better kitchen area. People have been asking for that for years improving the restrooms. So we have some single user and ADA friendly family stall kind of setups, um, trying to keep the space very simple, open, flexible for multiple types of use, um, yet at the same time have a stage available for performance and civic gatherings, um, and then create some sort of a more open and transparent uh, image for the building on Holden. So we don't look so much like um, a Grange Hall. And then uh, also, look at improving acoustics, but still trying to capture um, and minimize any noise impacts on any close neighbors that may happen to um, be lucky enough to live next door. Um, so uh, as we noted in the general membership meeting, a lot of folks uh, on this call were on that meeting as well, um, that was limited just to our membership, but we did have some sort of really hardcore discussion about money um, and we, we know we're gonna have to do some capital fundraising to replace the building, um, regardless of what scale we move it to. Um, and we, the board wants you to be aware that um, we are working on a fundraising plan. Um, the scheme tonight is gonna keep the building footprint that we have and try to reuse the existing foundation and floor on the 1980s side, which has the least fire damage and as newer construction. Um, and we'll also be trying to transform the attic space and make it uh, into more workable space, which will be accessible to the community. So the goals tonight uh, will be to have folks uh, speak their impressions on this design. How could it be better? How can it meet the neighborhood needs better? Um, how do you feel about this design as uh, an expression of our community uh, and our gathering space? And that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not even gonna do anything else. I'm just gonna give it over to Matt so we can get down to business. Thank you, Matt. Great, thank you. Thank you, Kay. Uh, super grateful to be continuing with the process and love hearing the last town hall, the feedback from the community. It's a great reminder of all the talent and diversity we have in the arts community, the building community, the construction community. So we're trying to capture everybody's feedback and channel that 
into a, into a single design that represents the best expression of all these different um, possibilities. So um, here with Jody, our partner, and uh, Nikki Sugihara is here as well, who's been um, working hard with us to develop the design. Um, so I'll share the screen uh, here. Okay, so everyone can see the screen. So we'll just run through this. I think we'll target maybe, um, maybe target um, a little under an hour or so. We could kind of go through it and then, um, and then leave it open for discussion. I think we'll I, we'll be done before an hour with the with the design and then open it for discussion. And then um, we need to run about seven twenty to the airport. And then those who can can stay on. And we'll record it. So if there's any further thoughts, we'll circle back with with Kay. And Matt, would you prefer to take questions as you go, or uh, kind of wait till you run through the initial slides? Maybe we'll run through the initial slides first, kind of quickly, and then we can circle back and and then go over them. So uh, as Kay noted, we had the community feedback, which we summarized into those notes that Kay articulated a moment ago. Um, and then we'll look at the floor plans. Uh, we have three general thoughts of some ways we could arrange the floor plans. We were looking for feedback on, on some of the lower floor plan arrangements. And then we have some exterior views uh, perspectives, uh, both inside um, of what it might look like, and then some um, images of, of some of the materials and shapes that it could look like as well. So the feedback Kate noted before, uh, these were some of the common themes that uh, were expressed by multiple people. And um, so that can be sent out as well um, as we narrow down, you know, what the key, what the key objectives are. I think for us, what stood out from a design point of view was um, the access to the outdoors. So yeah, a lot of people expressed a, a strong desire to more. have more connection to the outdoor space, both in the, the courtyard, the terrace, and also just to have more light and be able to have a better connection with the community. So that really resonated with our team because we always want all spaces to be very indoor outdoor, very holistic and have a feeling that the building and the site are are working together harmoniously. So we work to make the building feel more, more open and connected. And then another thing that stood out was uh, having different kinds of spaces. So having the building have different zones where different sizes of gatherings, large, medium, small could happen. You could have um, some spaces that are more closed off, some spaces that are open and also have a lot of uh, flexibility uh, where different types of groups could come and be able to adapt the space to what they needed. So, so in the new design, it's a little bit more open than the, than the previous one was. And the thinking is that um, we want to accommodate different uses in a way that still creates those feelings of, of small groups, more compact, intimate groups, but also large groups and has a more flexible arrangement. So those are some of the main th themes that we looked at. Okay, so next we'll look at three floor plan options and then we'll circle back and get people's thoughts about um, A, B, and C. So the, the A option, um, so in the A option, the um, to orient people, so this is um, Holden Street on the south and then um, this is the courtyard on the west. And the um, you know the original footprint um, of the building is here, and here, and here. So um, we're keeping the original footprint. And like Kay said, um, the original um, before the addition from grid C to D would be a total rebuild. So that area would be totally rebuilt. And then the the addition, the twenty five foot uh, addition, which is partially salvageable, we would work to keep the the floor of that. So, um, so in this layout, um, the ramp would be, there would be a new ramp coming from the west. So you'd have a 5% ramp, which would be uh, accessible without railings. And so that would allow uh, the 18 inch rise up to this west terrace. So there would be a new west terrace, which would have um, two steps um, and it kind of slopes. So it'd be three steps on the Holden side. And then that west terrace would be able to connect 
people and you'd have these large doors that allow people to come in and go back and forth between the West Terrace. So if there's an activity here, like outdoor gatherings or um, wine events or food events or kids playing, that could be um, enjoyed from the indoors and the West Terrace and they'd have more flow inside and out. And then on the corner, there would could be what we're calling a community cafe. So that could have a um, kind of like you see in coffee shops where you have a, a bar seating at 36 inch height. So you could have bar stools along the edge and a big table, and that would create this more enclosed space that is more intimate for smaller groups. And then, so, so this, um, all the schemes kind of looked at flipping what was currently there, the kitchen, bathroom, mechanical to the north side instead of the south side. Um, the reason being we wanted to make more connection to Holden Street and also orient the roof um, to the north, which you'll see coming up. So, so the kitchen would be moved to the northwest corner here. The thinking of that in this arrangement, the kitchen would be more connected to the terrace on the outside to the west um, and then across from the cafe. And then you'd have uh, bathrooms, five um, bathrooms here. There would be an ADA stall. Um, these, are, um, these are all gender bathrooms uh, with um, common sinks. So that allows more um, bathrooms in the same space. And there would be an elevator to a second floor um, janitor mechanical and then the same um, access to the alley for loading. <clears throat> and then the south patio. Um, so this is the area that we carved out. So the thinking is to allow more connection. One thing we heard from the community is that more connection to Holden um, in a way that felt more urban, more, um, more open. So people had a sense of what was happening in the building as they went by and also could help the community have more eyes on the street. If there's more glazing, it's um, a safer neighborhood to have people looking out. And then the um, open area is just a kind of an open flexible uh, with a mezzanine above. So that's what we're calling scheme A. And then in scheme B, uh, the difference is um, the north side is basically the same kitchen, bathroom, mechanical and the differences um, we're carving in uh, between grids B and C. So this would, the south patio would be here. And this we felt like was a nice idea that um, you know, the front door could be more, um, more here. So the, this would be the south patio. And so as you're, if you're coming up Holden, you could kind of come up to this terrace, which would be um, on the south west. And then that's more connected to the kitchen here the community cafe would be more in this corner. So that's kind of a flipped version of what we saw before. So in this one, you have the community cafe here and the south patio here on A, um, on B, these flip east to west. And then the third option, C, um, keeps the community cafe here and the south patio on the west, and then it mirrors the um, kitchen and mechanical. So in this scheme, the kitchen would be on the north east. And the thinking there was that, um, you know, if you had a bigger crowd out here, the kitchen would be kind of back in the corner, not unlike the previous original HPIC, where the kitchen, you kind of came in and you, the kitchen was in the back corner. And then that could promote an easier connection to the loading. So for loading and events, they could um, stage and park and move things in and out of the kitchen from the alley side, which would be more convenient. So that's option C. So one of the things we're, we're wanting to hear from folks is what um, of those options feels right. And then the stage, one big change too that's very different than the original one is the stage had a, um, a dedicated uh, elevated spot, which in some ways would made it very uh, recognizable and was very successful like when there was an event that had people on the stage. And we also heard from people that they felt like when there wasn't something happening on the stage, it was underutilized and felt a little bit awkward. And also it's not accessible because you know, people with different accessibility challenges can't get up onto that raised platform. 
so the it, all these concepts involve a modular stage, which would be you know an elevated stage that could move. So you could have it along the west, you could have it along the south, you, know, you could move it out here. So depending on um, the events that were happening, you could move the stage and adapt it to different orientations, which would have different acoustic and different um, transparency and accessibility um, feelings. So those are the three um, general layouts, and all of these have um, the big improvement is all, you can, or the big um, you you expansion would be the second floor. So on the second floor, we would um, you'd come up the stairs here. Um, so the stairs go up. Uh, this would be open to below, and then the um, this would be a mezzanine. So you could have people um, gathered around the top area looking down. So if there was, you know, if there was a stage here or a stage here, you could have people looking down kind of like you see in some music venues where um, you can have people on, on the floor down below a dance or movie or music or performance. And then you can also have people on the upper mezzanine. And then we added a, uh, a rooftop deck here. So this could also go um, open out. And so a lot of the events happen in the afternoon and afternoon, early evening. So being able to have that Western light and the sunsets view to the West and also overlooking the courtyard, you know, could be a great, um, another layer to the use of the building. Um, so so the, the effort is to create um, additional zones. So the, you know, the older, original building had a very distinct outside, then you went through the front door, then there was that first um, zone, which was um, divided by the columns and the half wall, then there was the second zone. So there's sort of three main, three zones in the original building. So what we're trying to do is to, is to through design, offer um, many more zones and zones that can be more flexible and overlapping. So we still have this zone one, which is the outdoor space, um, but, and then we're adding this zone two, which would be the, um, the west terrace that um, gives you another place to be looking out to the outdoor terrace. Um, then we have kind of zone three, which is along the edge. These are underneath the mezzanine. So these are going to feel um, different in that you have a, a nine foot ceiling above you. And then zone four is kind of the main, you know, the, this also has a ceiling above you and you can look out and, and be in and out of the outdoor terrace. And you can also kind of be in and out of the zone seven, which is open to above. So the zone seven is a, has the tall ceiling, which you'll see in a moment. Um, and then zone five is the little cafe, more intimate. And then zone eight could be an outdoor west terrace. So the thinking is um, this idea that you have different user groups um, that need different spaces and different size spaces. And also in an event, one of the things that many humans enjoy in an event is being able to find a space where they feel comfortable. So if there's an event happening, you know, different people feel comfortable in different sizes of spaces, different ways to sit, different levels of being kind of like in the middle of the crowd versus on the edges. So the idea is that these, these zones offer up um, different places to be, both on the lower floor and then on the upper floor. So within the three floor plan options, that's something to think about is how those different zones might relate to each other. Okay, so now we'll look at the exterior. Do you want to say something? No. Okay. Uh, so we'll look at the exterior. So, uh, so this shows the um, patio to the west. So we have the west terrace in its original form. And then we have the um, new elevated terrace to the west. And we have this upper roof deck on top. So you'd have these three layers that would um, be able to, sorry. You have these three layers that would, um, you could see out to the west. And then the, the new thinking with the roof is, we also heard that the idea of a lot of solar panels and maximizing access to solar um, power to the south was good. So, uh, and that also made like a human um, sized roof along Holden. So having a, a roof that was more 
um, at the level of, of humans on the low side along Holden, and then it would go up to the north and have um, more even northern light. So a space that had high windows to the north will create a more even light throughout the day, and there'd be less concern about direct light coming in, kind of blinding people at different times of the day. And if people want south light, you would be able to be more on the ground in the south terrace. And the south elevation along Holden Street would have um, this slightly elevated south um, terrace, the rooftop patio with a view to the courtyard. Uh, this is the same um, entry gate here. Um, um, and then for reference, the dash line shows the existing roof. So to get a sense of the size of it, the dash line is the existing roof and then the new roof would slope away and it does look very tall, but it's not, it wouldn't feel this tall because it's be, it would be sloping away from you on the Holden Street side and the high side would be back in the and, parking lot. And all of its neighbors are taller, right? It's neat, yeah. So it would be, as, it, the, at the high point, it would be as tall as the townhomes around it. Yeah, so so we felt like it. that was one of the thoughts to give it a more civic scale that felt like it's um, a community uh, roof that um, commonly shelters a larger group and feels like more like a civic building. And then we have kind of a cafe style seating on the corner, a wood screen of vegetation to reduce noise. So there's ways to mitigate. We recognize that Holden is very loud and not currently the most pleasant place to be. So we recognize that there's ways to mitigate um, that condition along Holden. So this is a rendering of, of the A scheme. So this would have the roof shedding away from you to the north, large solar array on the south, um, screens and planting to mitigate noise along Holden. And this was an idea that you could open up some of Holden to get uh, a window into what's happening, both for people that are walking by and also um, when you're in the building, you may want to have some more awareness of what's happening and be able to, you know, perhaps have um, events that may open out more publicly towards Holden, in addition to opening out to the west. So, so this south side can be kind of adaptable. And then this one has the community cafe on the west side. So there you can see there's a there's a 42 inch tall wall. So you'd be sitting there kind of in like in coffee shops where you have your laptop or your book or magazine on that low counter, and then you're sitting and watching the world go by on windows that go from the countertop up to the ceiling. And then here you see the rooftop garden. So that would be a place that you could um, be away from things and also see out to the west. Um, and we realized there's quite a bit more layers of um, building than the original building, so and that which will cost more. That also is an idea that you could stage it for later. So if it's becoming um, cost prohibitive in phase one, you could build the shell of the building and then some of the additional um, things like the rooftop terrace and guardrails could be built as a second layer. These were some uh, examples of the elevated patios. So this is um, have a lot of restaurants. So it's up about 30 inches, which is it's a nice um, feeling to be up just slightly. So even if there's a lot of noise and traffic, if you're up that amount, um, there's a feeling that you're a little bit removed from the activity and you can watch things go by and you see this a lot in, in cities and on busy streets. And on the right is the Civic Hotel, uh, which is a project that we did um, near the Space Needle and um, same concept where it's a quite busy street along Harrison in South Lake Union, um, and you're elevated enough that where you know there's cars and noise going by, and by being slightly elevated, you feel even though it's acoustically the same, you there's something about you feel a little safer because you're not right next to it. You're slightly elevated, and then you're protected with the with the wood railing. So then a few perspective views. Um, so this is one idea of the interior. So. Um, this is Holden on the left, and this is the terrace to the west. So we're looking out to the west. So uh, the idea was be you would slope the roof, 
roof up to the north um, so that if there's activities happening on the west or the east, um, people up in the mezzanine could be looking down on the activity below. Um, there's that community cafe in the corner, the terrace to the west, and then people um, going towards the kitchen on the back corner. <coughs> And all kinds of people, all kinds of people doing doing stuff. Um, and then in terms of the materials, we're thinking that it could be a wood floor, which feels very, um, keeps that continuity of what was there before. Maybe it's a maple floor, maybe it's an oak floor. Um, we know that's there's a maintenance um, element to that, um, but that feels like a very warm you know, floor and comfortable to dance on and have events. And you could have a wood ceiling which there's a few different ways to build that. And then a lot of the rest of the materials could be very simple, simple drywall. So you have a wood floor, wood ceiling, and the rest of it is more um, just simple drywall. So here you see the roof. So this is Holden on the right. That would be the um, indoor outdoor flow to the terrace. Um, and then the roof would slope up and we're, we like this history of the of the area of these kind of industrial buildings with sawtooth roofs, which are very practical because they have north light, mm -hmm. and you can kind of build them in you know simple simple panels. So um, that lets north light come in, and we can play around with that. We know there's an acoustic um, element to how the noise travels in these, which we're going to um, look at with our acoustic consultant. But generally speaking, the the music would be happening along um, one of the edges and then it would amplify um, and you'd be able to be up in the mezzanine looking down. You have some uh, flex spaces above um, northern light for e even lighting and then south light coming in for the solar panels. And then these kind of flex zones in the middle. And then the crawl space, which would be the existing crawl space could have mechanical and storage. And these were some sketches of the interior. Um, so this would be looking out towards the, um, you know, looking out towards the, um, towards Holden. So, you know, you could have, if there was an event, you know, happening here, um, you could have curtains that came down, you know, which would help acoustically. Um, if it felt like, you know, a lot of times you have performances, you don't want something behind you so that curtains could go across and come out. Or if you wanted to have an event, Looking out towards Holden, you could turn the other way. You, know, you could have it. You could have the music coming from from this side, going out that way. Um, here you see the mezzanine above, so you see people um, hanging out above. This would be looking out towards the terrace to the west. So this idea that you have these different zones. So you have people in these um, edges that are like eddies. Like if you imagine the way that water moves through. Uh, a river course, you know, there's like the main flow and then there's like these eddies of people where you can find comfort along the edges. So the next slide. So this would be looking at it from above. So this would be um, looking down from below. So here you would, um, so that would be the terrace outside um, then you could be up here sitting. I don't know if people have been like to Numos or other um, performance spaces, but it, there's this um, or any kind of theater where you're above looking down. So this could be, you can have people along the edge that goes out to the West Terrace um, for the sunset. And then you go down here, you can see the, um, you know, the curtains and the um, events happening down below. And this would be storage. So there'd be a um, kind of a storage room there in the corner. So this is looking to the east. So this would be um, Holden. So there'd be you know cars going by, people on the sidewalk, um, hanging out. Um, and then you could be up here on the, you, know, you could be up here on the deck and you could either have, you could have plans, you could have screening, you could have some awareness of what's happening in between the building and along Holden. And then if there was a band, you know, the band could be either here, you know, the band could be here. And then you could have people up above 
and there could be this kind of theater of movement of both the performers and the observers that have this um, relationship at different levels. And because it's it's a lot taller, there's also sometimes it needs to feel more um, close to the size of people. So there could be like lights or curtains. You know, you could you could string um, a line across of, to subdivide. So depending on how um, you know how tricky or how simple one could do it, there's different ways you could you subdivide the space. <clears throat> Okay, so those are those were the sketches, and then these are just finally final few slides, and then we'll open it up for um, comments. Um, this is uh, this is a lot larger building, the Seattle Design Center in Soto, but it kind of is a representative of that um, tradition of like a sawtooth roof where you get these north lights coming in, and the ceiling could look not unlike this. So the ceiling could have this um, car decking with with wood beams, and that could give you that texture and, and very even light. And then here on the right, you see an event and the way that it can be divided up. So you, know, you can string lights across, um, you can have curtains, you know, there's ways of having this large space be subdivided to feel more um, small scale or, or flexible depending on what's happening. Um, and then finally, there's this idea of public art. You know, there's so many talented artists in the community and um, you know, Kay was talking about how it's we want to have a neutral space. We want to have generally the interior space be more neutral, and you can have different traveling exhibits or panels. And then you know, maybe on the alley side or maybe on the maybe on the north side, you could have a more permanent um, mural or something. So you know, we feel like the materiality of the building could be very simple, and some of the spaces could be more like a canvas where the community can express um, different artistic visions that could be that could change over time. So that's it. So that's our initial um, pass at it. So we wanted to open it up to um, thoughts and feedback and um, yeah, just hear the kind of um, how people react to the slides. So I, I can leave the slides up and we can go back to whatever slide um, people want to refer to and kind of hear, hear people's feedback. So. So we're going to rely on you guys. Um, if you could raise your hand, um, your little hand icon, that's probably pretty helpful. If, if Unless we want to take the slides down, then we can see each other more. And I'd like to go back up the chat, Matt, first, before we take any new questions. Yeah. Um, so we capture um, some of the comments. So um, um, first thing we heard from Matt, do you want to speak that, Matt, or do you want me to just go for it? No, go for it. Go for it. Yeah. OK, sure. Yeah. So it's a comment, um, uh, I'll just read it. Um, the mezzanine, granted the mezzanine adds floor space to the total building, but it does seem a shame to lose the main level floor space on the south exterior space, especially considering the noise level from Holden, as well as weather generally coming from the Southwest much of the year. Uh, we've heard that before, um, for sure, Matt, I'm, I'm totally with you. Um, do you wanna yeah. speak to that at all, Matt? Or? I'll just, or otherwise I'll just kind of go down these comments. Yeah, I'm trying to, how do I see the comments? I can't quite see. Uh, it's in the chat. chat. Open your chat window. I think if I, I think cause I'm sharing, I can't see it. Yeah, it, that's one of the problems of sharing, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I open the chat, so. Yeah, sometimes I'll drag the chat off to the side if you have two screens and then you can see it while you have the screen share on too, I think. But it is a drawback. Okay. Um, well, so I'll leave the share off that we can make it open it back. Yeah, we're well, happy to put that back up for folks. So just if your question yeah. wants to look at that, just give a holler. Yeah. yeah. Then do you want did you did you want Matt Hooks to speak to that or well or, he's or Matt the architect? Let me read it. Uh so do you want to speak to that at all, Matt? Or um Matt Matt the architect. <laughs> <laughs> so many Matt. <laughs> I know. Excuse, excuse me one second, Kay. So uh huh. What's the order? Are you? Because I didn't know we were supposed to put our stuff in the chat bar. You don't I have to. Don't talking. worry. We're we're gonna okay. call on you. Okay. I, right. I just thought I'd start with what's in chat and then work okay. down the hands if that's okay with you. Sure. Unless you yeah. want to comment, like if no, you're no, you can work down. That's super fine. Super urgent and um no, or, or like speaking to something, right? That's good. Um. So anyway, uh, I think I don't know what. Do you have anything to say about this, Matt Whitman? 
Um, I, no, that's a very that's a very important, uh, very practical. Yeah, and, it's, um, it's very true. I think that it has to do with. Um, I guess I'm not totally following how the mezzanine takes say, away. Although we get more space, we lose space because of. The yeah. Main level. Yeah, we're we're. I think he's reluctant to give up what we've got. You know what I mean. But are you talking about the the cutout along Holden or the mezzanine? Yeah. I think that refers to a cut out. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I see. Okay. No, I think that's true. I think we can talk about it. Um, I mean, I think it has to do with, you know, currently it's a very blank face along Holden. So, you know, currently it's very narrow, very opaque. You know, you don't really know what's going on inside the building. It doesn't feel very urban. You know, it feels more like when the building was built, it was a more suburban type of neighborhood where people kind of went inside, did their thing, and went outside. So the thought would be to, um, give back a little bit to the community in a way that feels more urban and more like what where the future of the neighborhood and where the future of the city is going having some terrace so i think it's a question of how much you know i think we can right. determine how do, do how we much. know how much we lose there do we have i mean i think what we've drawn nikki what how far is that is it maybe like 10 feet or so i think we i think right now it's probably about 10 feet deep but it you know it could be we can we could play with that if you know it could be and, and also if you could just be, you know. yeah i'm sorry to over over talk you too matt but just remember the that we lost that 10 feet originally to the stairs and the men's room um if you think about how far in that went right that's uh, true so right so it's not a total loss and then there's the new net gain of the mezzanine and mezzanine. then and then all the okay. exterior so you know practically speaking i i would we believe there's probably about 30% more total space, mm -hmm. usable space than the current building. So, and this idea of and flexibility, then, this idea that while it's an outdoor space, um, you know, from a landscape architecture point of view, you know, we see that outdoor space being as useful or more as useful and more useful than indoor space, especially in the seasons when the doors can be open. Um, could I move now to, that's good, Will, but um, I think that, the just know if you put something down in chat or even when you speak it, it's uh, mean, uh, after we answer it here that it's not going to be thought about more. I so feel free to bring stuff up because it's super helpful um, to finesse the design, and that's a really important point. Catherine also is curious. Catherine Wilberton, thank you um, for commenting. How how would the, we be able to provide performance space type lighting, for example, like a if you had a play <clears throat> sort of performance you want a spotlight on the band where does that do you have a vision for that yet it might be a little early for that but I, i'm sure it can be done well, i think one thing we know for sure it will be easy to change the light bulbs we will not yeah. have any high <laughs> <laughs> light bulbs so yeah i think that we'd like it to, to be um like you know you see a lot of um, music venues they have i don't know what you call it is it called rigging you know where they have yeah. you know things that are somewhat flexible so you know, uh, Laura idea. probably wants to comment about that now. Go yeah. ahead, Laura. Laura has a lot of experience with lighting. Yeah, I'm a theater person all my life. Um, most theater rigging is like 45 degrees <sighs> off the stage and the lighting so that it hits the performers. It's not above the performers' heads because that's not lighting up faces. It's lighting up tops of heads. Mm -hmm. So you should talk to somebody at PNTA here in West Seattle, PNTA. Okay. Um, they are Pacific Theater, I forgot the whole, but it's PNTA, and uh, they can give you tips about how to light a stage, and that's my concern, if you've got this moving stage, how are you going to have the proper lights for the stage, and that's not just for music and theater, that's when our guests come to speak, we want to have good lighting, right, and good sound, and on that note about the stage thing, I mean, I think the design that you've done is beautiful, I'm very excited about it, I have to say, A number one is beautiful. Thank you. Um, but being about the stage, because I actually, first year of my business in 2001, I did kids theater in the old place, um, is that uh, what I know about portable stages is that they're rickety. You know, they're kind of like, you, 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 you walk on them and they're like, they reverberate, they're really an awful sound. So you're having somebody maybe in a play walking across, it's like boom, 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 boom. And what about when the bands come with their big, heavy B3 organs? You know what that is, a B3? Those are those heavy ass, big time organs that a lot of bands have. I mean, that's a lot of weight on a portable stage, right? So I, I think the stage should be solidly somewhere in that building 
and be lit properly and have the right kind of sound on it, the right kind of speakers. And that's the stage. Boom. It's a really important part of our of our place. You know, if we we did political speeches, we did, you know, see, we got people agreeing. It's not because otherwise it's like, oh, we'll just have somebody playing guitar over here and somebody else is talking up there and there's all this stuff going on. When people are on a stage, they want people to look at them. They want people to see them and hear them. They don't want to have people having conversations and doing other things in the corner there. That's what performance is. So I think there should be a dedicated stage area, stage area where we respect the artists who are performing. And you know they're not on some portable thing that's not lit properly, but the rest of the stuff is great. I think the outdoor thing and on Holden should be connected to the West outdoor space rather than on the other side. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, the alley true. side, I think yeah. I love that little outdoor thing, but I think it should be connected to the outdoor space most definitely. Yeah. And where are the chairs and tables going to be so that we can store them? And that was a big thing with every corner bar night is hauling out those big ass tables and chairs. Where do we store them? And can we, they be stored in a really great way that it's easy to get to them, that they're lightweight, but they're sturdy. That's really, really important. And I love the wood floor, man. We got to get back to the wood floor. I'm sorry. That's part of the history of that building is that maple floor. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe not the ceiling, but the floor for sure. Because that's a dance floor. And that and, and Highland Park Improvement Club was all about dances. Oh, over through the years, the decades. Okay. You know what the pictures are. Super, yeah. Laura. You've got it. We got it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, that's, 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 we would love to, yeah, hear from the community. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Okay, Laura, yeah. your hand is down. And curtains now. behind the stage for acoustics. Yeah, that's we're, good. We're, yeah, yes. we know about that. Yes, right. I think one. I think that's one of the key. I think what you what you spoke to is one of the key questions for the club the, and the identity of the club is how much of it. How much of the club is 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 this, is focused on a, a singular performance space. And you know, and how, and what's the identity of that? Because you know, that all, of those things. yeah, we're trying to go, like find the right blend of of optimizing for a singular um, focal performance, and then also the other events like yoga and wine tasting, yeah. and you know, things that are happening when there's not a singular um, performance being going on. You know, like town hall in you know downtown is like a really great place. It's like focused on a stage, um, and there's you know places that are like theaters that are designed specifically for viewing. So I think the question for, for the community kind of opening it up for everybody is like, how, like, are we optimizing for a singular performance spot? We had or yoga there for years and a stage. Okay, I, I wanna hear somebody else now. <laughs> uh, let's have Corey, she's got her hand up next. Just something to tack on related to that is um, anytime there's gonna be a performance space there should be a green room for performers. I, I work in an institution that has all kinds of performances and there was never a green room uh, incorporated and it's a real drag. There's um, no place for people to change their clothes or use the bathroom or have something to eat or whatever before they go on stage. So um, whether, whether you end up having a permanent spot for your stage or it's a flexible moving one, it, they should think about that space use just someplace that the performers can prepare. Thanks. Thanks, Corey. Yeah, we never had that before, so we never knew what we were missing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let's, I'm just gonna just quickly see, um, I don't see any other hands uh, technically raised, so I'm gonna um, just read some more comments. Um, folks are uh, also speaking up to, uh, a yes for a stage, some sort of a permanent stage. We don't really know how that will be laid out, but we do feel like we like that singular thing. So it looks like we should, we'll be revisiting that a little bit. Um, uh, someone brought up in chat security. Um, I feel like that's a kind of a, I hate to say that, but I feel like that's kind of a huge issue on that idea of having that open patio on Holden side. Um, to me, that's, uh, as a trustee, I find that sort of concerning. So I'm throwing that out into the conversation. I see Galen's got their hand up. Thanks. Go ahead, Galen. Thanks, everyone. This is my first meeting. I'm a new resident, Island Park. Welcome. Um, one Welcome. thought I had with the uh, 
with the stage placement um, or and the and the patio, I would I would wonder how the acoustics of where the stage goes, how that could really be a big uh, deciding factor in where the patio goes, um, and kind of letting the acoustic engineer kind of weigh in on where they thought the stage going going best uh, could then impact where the patio ends up if we keep the patio. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, and you were referring what you called the. Could you say the patio? Uh, would you mean the patio that's on the Holden side there? Correct, the south yeah, patio. Okay. Yeah, the Thank A and B you. versions. Okay. Yeah, super. How about you, Barry? What do you want to? What do you got on your mind? You're muted. Am I back now? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Sorry, I've got, uh, I've got a question for Matt. How, how big is zone seven? That's the main area under the, you know, the open area. Yeah, so um, it's about, so it's like basically 38 feet by um, 50. Like, like about 40, it's about like 40 by 40. How does that relate to how big it was before? Um, well, I think the south patio is, it's, you know, it's probably about the same because the between grid two and three is where like the bathrooms and. So it's about 40 by 40. Yeah. Okay. It's about 40 by 40. And uh, Okay, I, I did want to say I really like the design. What I like about it is the uh, mezzanine uh, is one thing I really like. Uh, I think it gives it some drama. And I think it's important that it's a um, showcase kind of place for important celebrations and important events. Uh, the wood floor, bravo, that's very important, I think. Um, on, if we could go back to that where you were showing me uh, where we're looking at like A, B, and C. Because I do think, oh, I like the roof, by the way, too. The natural light is really good. I think this is a key decision of what happens on Holden, as I think others have said. Um, my concern about this, the south patio, is that it kind of becomes a windswept, dirty little place. Um, that you know if you have a stage there and also i'm really i think we should optimize the space as others have said for performance mm -hmm. and lighting and acoustics and that's our core motive mm -hmm. and i think you're not going to use that entrance a lot if that stage is there and i i prefer if we have a notch out to be to the west that where it would connect to the existing courtyard myself. This yeah. is, I think, more open, less of a dead end. Uh, and this community cafe could be mobile. I mean, that could, you know, depending on where you put the stage, could um, be something that is mobile. Is the community cafe anything more than tables and chairs? No, there might, we, there's a thought there might be a small sink. Okay. But generally, it would just be, you know, there wouldn't, the, all the functions of the kitchen would be on the other side with the refrigerator and stove and everything. The, the idea of the community cafe would be, you know, like the, some of the function that was there on the original west part where you could sit and feel more quiet. You have tables, you know, you feel like you're a little tucked away. So I think it could be fairly um, flexible or you're, you're right, it could be movable. It could just be a matter of where you put the tables and chairs. Mm -hmm. and, and so could we just clarify too, like Megan is asking about that as well. Um, if the, if there's a vision that that's open all the time, you know, or available on a regular basis or only for events. And um, I don't know, um, Megan, if you're on still, but, um, or if you want to talk to that, I mean, originally before you arrived, oh wait, maybe I've got the wrong Megan, but anyway, I don't think there's a vision for it always being open, but who knows? We don't, we don't really know. Hi, this is May and I'm the one who asked that question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just sorry, wondering. I mangled there, your name up. <laughs> oh, that's all right. At one time there was a, um, like a, a little coffee cafe stand in the parking lot of, um, the improvement club. And that was really cool. Um, I was just wondering if there were any 
plans for that to be happening permanently that were in tandem with the um, improvement of the building. I mean, I think, I think now that we know, I think our, our thought would be would, if you had got like a coffee card or you could have okay. some pop-up, you know, pop-up thing and that that could be an outside of the patio, it could be inside kind of a, a more mobile thing or maybe when there's an event, there would be a place where you could serve um, drinks and mm -hmm. things and coffee and yeah, you could you kind of sit there. The yeah, it's like yeah. a hangout, like kind of a third place. It kind of came up with this idea that, you know, especially during COVID, people are working from home, that, you know, giving people another place, kind of like the corner, you know, corner bar, like all the time, or, you know, kind of like the, or the, you know, the corner store, you have a place where you can kind of hang out. Um, and I see another, thank you. Um, thanks. So I, hopefully that's clarifying, Megan. The, um, there, before the advent of our current corner store too, the Highland Park corner store, there, there was more, I think there was more urgency to that idea um, of having that third space. I think that we ha are lucky to have what we have now with that other store. We have some zoning questions about how we would be able to run an actual cafe out of that space because we're not zoned commercial. Right. So anyway, it's kind of like a, more like thinking of it as a community cafe, like a space at this point. But right. in the future, 50 years, you know, uh, from now, who, who knows what it could be, right? Right, you could plumb um, it. I think you see this sometimes where you plumb it and there's a little sink there and, and even like in an informal way, you know, you just have a place where you can have like a little coffee counter. And, right, for a meeting. Like a meeting. Right. Yeah, and I think that's a good comment, Catherine. Um, also commented about maybe moving that quiet space upstairs and making the downstairs mm -hmm. space a little bit different. Um, so I wanted somebody had another question in chat. I was trying to go back to. Oh, Donna is asking: Are are these plans based on phases of building, or are uh, did we decide we're going to go for the second floor? How can you talk about a little bit um, how you think this could be phased, Matt? Uh, and then I'll get to you, Kyle, next. Yes, that's been a key question as it relates to the fundraising and ambition around cost. Um, so the concept is you would build the shell. So you would get a building permit for everything that's drawn. And then um, you would make sure that the, the community felt confident they could raise enough money to, for a shell and occupancy. So that would mean you, know, you build the roof, the walls, all the heating systems. Um, you would need at least, well, depend, you probably would need all the bathrooms, but you wouldn't need the kitchen. You, you, know, you wouldn't have to finish the mezzanine above. You could I think there's a you know there's a minimum scheme where you could have um, the ground floor um, bathrooms completed, the floor completed, the heating electrical systems, um, and you see this a lot with houses. You know it was a common practice, and all over the world it's a common practice that you kind of you you build enough to to have it habitable and safe on the ground floor, but then you have like a you know like a an attic. You can think about like an attic that you could finish out later. So you you know if if you if we didn't if the funding wasn't there for the upper floor, you know, yeah. and the, you know, you could, you could. So we could still get something, we could still get something started. You can get something that started means, and then you can come back later yeah. with funding and you, you know, this like staff office, this bath, the rooftop deck, you know, awesome. you wouldn't have to build that as phase one. You, you would, you know, you'd struct, you build the structure for it and the systems, but you wouldn't have to like finish it. And, you know, because like, you know, these railings are very expensive. The decking is expensive. Okay. Of course. But it's just all, you know, it's all stuff. The traditional age pick way. Yeah. <laughs> just keep nice it. Well, I just I just haven't heard a lot, and I just haven't heard a lot about like the idea of what the business looks like, like who's running it, who's you know maintaining it, who's in charge, you know, like who's making decisions. I don't uh, just in, when it's all up and going, and I think that a lot of the things that we're talking about have a lot of questions for that part too, and I just haven't heard a lot of that so. Yeah, I think we're going to have to circle back to that aspect. Um, yeah, you know, I, I, we can't handle that tonight. I don't think. Um, could I? Could I go to? Kyle? Are you good, Donna? Can I go to Kyle now? So we get him out um, in the, uh, what he wants to say. Kyle, can you go? Hi, this is actually Hillary. We like oh, Hillary. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations, by the way. Oh, 
Thank you. You'll probably hear her a bit in the background. That's why we're not on camera. But uh, so we are on the north side neighbor and I'm just thinking about sound coming up this way. And to me, it seems like the stage positioning where it's facing out west makes the most sense, just like sound absorption wise, um, just in the same vein of us having a brand new baby and keeping the sound kind of mitigated. Um, so I just wanted to throw our two cents in there on that of, of that part of it. Right. That's yeah, I think that could work. work. Yeah, I think that was, uh, there was also the thought from others as well as that the stage could be uh, kind of behind the stairs or in front of the stairs to the east because right, we we didn't hear much of anything at the old i mean we could definitely hear it when the doors were open and stuff but it, it was not as loud in the in the previous building so um yeah just... and, and one thing i just want to reassure you guys a little bit too is Right just here. remember that that i think that was those were like two by fours with basically no insulation um, okay. that the old structure was made with. And uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be meeting some current codes that are way more uh, helpful. Yes, it's true. In acoustics. Right, right. But I think, yeah, there's the acoustics and, there, and then there's also the, you know, the feeling of being there and there's, you know, where they're oriented. But yeah, it does seem like if it's on the west or if it's on the east oriented towards the west or if it's on the um, south oriented to the north. I think that's something we could look at with the acoustic mm -hmm. consultant. And also um, hearing more from the performers. I know the, from the performers. Point of view, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just saying, from the performers' point of view, you know, you want you want the performers or speakers to feel comfortable. Yeah, traditionally we've always had to shut down at eleven o'clock as well. So, I mean, that is what we've always done, and it doesn't help with the new baby. I know that, but <laughs> just keeping that in mind. Years. The babies will grow up. They'll grow up. <laughs> Super. Yeah, there's some city codes that 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 prohibit um, partying in this kind of zone ap after eleven, and I think it's midnight on weekends, right? Um, on the north side. Well, Laura, the problem is the if you look at here, then you're. Um, Maybe Matt, could you go back to that elevation kind of view? There, then you kind of you're you're tucking your person in front of the bathroom, and then you have the other drawback of yeah, it's more of a community center. I mean, yeah, and Kurt is rightly pointing out that we're not actually building a bar or a music venue, although we are using the building a lot like a roadhouse. Uh, part of the time, but um, it, it's, it's got to have a lot more flexibility than that. So, you know, we, we, we have to kind of weigh all these things, right? And so it's probably not gonna be perfect at everything. It will have to be what it has been. It will have to be um, good, uh, good enough. Right, I think it's a good way. I think that's a great way of thinking about it. You want it to be good for a, a large, group of um, things that could happen. You want it to be you know, comfortable and good for many different things. It's not gonna be optimized for any singular use. Mm -hmm. Hey, so Kirk, what, what is it that you don't really like about it? You said you're not too excited. Are you talking about the, the, the um, audio? Sorry to put you on the spot. Okay, thank you. So what are people thinking about the um, these? It sounds like people are gravitating towards the option with the um, the south patio on the southwest. If there is if there is a notch out, it would be, make more sense on the southwest. Yeah, maybe it's thinner. And maybe it doesn't need to be so big. You know, this could yeah, be just a, this way. a in the you know, south dimension. Yeah, this could be more like you know, could be more like along here, you know, so you're not giving up so much, just a little bit yeah. of a acknowledgement that there's a, you know, a place you come around the corner, you can kind of get in mm -hmm. along there. 
Yeah, I like them connected to other people are mm -hmm. saying they like that. Catherine yeah. likes that the patio's connected. Yeah, the fact that like there's just a flow between you know these zones. So yeah, you have things happening here, you have things happening on the West Terrace, things happening over here. And just from the perspective of crowd control and just um, uh, knowing where things are, like your kids, for example, I think the less yeah. little exterior spaces that are open to the street are is probably better. Right, more protected. You can, you know, yeah. you have this is the same fence, so you can have and the south patio would, you know, that would also have, yeah, for for security, this would be um, fenced or raised in a way that you know it would be locked, so they wouldn't during at night, you know, people wouldn't be coming in easily. I have a quick question on that. It looked like in some of the renderings that there's a uh, the roof overhang goes over the patio. Is that was that true? Yes, the south patio. Yeah, the south patio. Yes, yeah. So the south patio, well, you can kind of see it here. Um, yeah, so the south the the south patio would be covered, fully fully covered. So you see that. So I think that's a nice thing to consider. Someone mentioned the weather earlier, but mm -hmm. we're, we are talking about a covered patio. Yes. And then that could be also secured, so you know you could have. Yeah, I think it, I mean, I think that's very real, the idea yeah. that you want it to be controllable and, and security. I also like having the kitchen nearer that side of the building, uh, towards the courtyard side, actually, if you go back to ABC. I know you've done some thinking about this, but I actually like the first iteration of the kitchen there. B. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just because it is closer to the decking. And if, if folks um, agree, um, I mean, just think back to like just a year ago when we were um, helping out folks and performing food service, you know, and trying to help out in the neighborhood, you know, that kind of kitchen there would have been terrific, mm -hmm. um, a, a terrific asset to that, to that ability to um, feed people. Mm -hmm. And um, make that connection i could just see like if we had been doing that sort of food um, security work this would have been a really nice mm -hmm. um a nice setup for that um yeah um or connection right directly i could even have like a yeah, open window but, you could have like a takeout window oh there you go yeah right or um yeah and i don't know if i don't know if i wanted to, have people load into the kitchen or not i think we'd be wasting a door <laughs> doors take up space but anyway uh we got two folks up i'm sorry you guys i'm spacing out who put their hand up first let's have Catherine because galen you got to go once before and then i'll get to you okay hey can you hear me yes uh-huh oh great i'm sorry i'm not on video um i just was had a thought that uh if you if in this this schema that we're looking at now if you were to created a more dedicated performance space or one that could you know function better as a performance space um, you could make that community cafe cafe room be sort of multi-purpose because it could be a green room on the nights that you have performance if you if, if you thought about like the way it's closed off and where the doors are located you could sort of use it as a green room for a performance night and then the rest of the time have it be more open for you know neighborhood meetings or whatever it is you're going to use that space for okay yeah. that's a great idea. yeah that's a great idea um and then uh sorry galen go uh-huh. I just hadn't lowered my hand from earlier. Thanks. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Yeah. Just looking to see if we have anybody else. Um, we're doing well on time. Uh, Lloyd has a question. Any plan to consult with a music event venue engineer who would know the power and other requirements for stage and lighting, et cetera? Uh, yes. There is a plan for that, Lloyd, thanks. Um, uh, PNT has one. 
uh, certainly. Um, and then there's also folks who just do sound engineering um, uh, that we, we like to chat with. And we were working with PNTA when we were doing the original remodel of the building. Um, and we were kind of stepping into kind of improving the lighting situation that was always unfortunate um, in the old club with the uh, kind of spotlights that were lighting up people's hair, as Laura put it. <laughs> um, and then um, let's see, uh, can we go to Judith? Uh huh. Yeah, I, I have a question for the board, not that I expect you to answer it right now, but I wonder if the board has, has a philosophical statement as to whether we are, are building a bar theater venue or if we are building a community center that is more encompassing of the community. Because I think that could help drive what we're going to do here. Uh, I will, I'll just, I'm not going to speak that to that tonight. As you know, that's a really complex question. Yeah, that's what but, I said. I'm just, yeah. And I don't have the whole board here, right. but you're right. And we do have to make money. Uh, we have to make, it has to be sustainable financially. So we do have to consider that, that sort of kind of commerce aspect, you know, will it be rented out? How will it be used? We've been able to hang on to it for hundred years because we were able to rent it out, right? That's, that's basically how we were able to maintain the property in a public venue as a publicly owned space. So um, um, just, we just have to remember that um, and make sure that it's, that it still is useful to people, right? Um, but Corner Bar did not pay all the bills for sure. It was, it was designed to be a public service to the community as well for socializing. Anyway, um, so hopefully, but we are noting your question because I think the work that the board's doing right now with 501 Commons um, is directly trying to address sort of like where we're going with the future and what the programming is gonna look like um, and that sort of aspect. So just know that we're still doing that work. Of course, folks are welcome to come to that um, or participate. Um, it, it, it's pretty intense at the moment, but there's a lot of opportunity for membership uh, in future to get to that. Hopefully I'm speaking out of kind of off the top of my head since not all our board is here tonight, unfortunately. Um, Blair, you want, or Dina, is that you, Dina? It's, no, that was, that was me, Blair. It's Blair's hand, okay. Yeah, my, my hand could, uh, we take another look at that section view of the facility. There, is it feasible to make that crawl space tall enough to be a usable basement in the future? Is that existing? That's existing. I, I think that's a good question. I think it's the question is related to the the ability to reuse the existing foundation. I think certainly in the new area, you know, if you're building a new foundation, it's probably more of like a cost question. If you know the cost implications of digging down further. Um, and building deep, deeper foundations. So maybe that's, if that was important, I know that's, you know, a lot of space for storage and different things that could be used. I mean, maybe that's something the, the construction team could give a general sense of, you know, the cost of, of, of digging down. I don't know, does anyone recall the existing height? Is it like five feet? Oh yeah. On uh, average? Blair's I, the one that's been down there. Yeah, Blair been knows. There and it's, it's really creepy, but there are a few places where uh, I'm not very tall, but there are a few places where I can stand up without uh, hunching. without hunching over, but it would need uh. to be dug down a little bit further, but I think you'd have to dig it down further anyway to get to solid ground. So it, I think it's worth keeping that option open and looking at the cost delta to reserve that. And then that stairway that you've designed in, Underneath that would be where the stairway down into the basement would be. Right. But the only question would be ADA access to that uh, basement space. Right. But maybe the, I guess it's a question of what's it, what the basement's used for. You know, would you want to make that like the kind of a space where people would do things or is it more like mechanical storage, you know, non public uh, storage? I don't think you have to be ADA accessible. That's right. That's right. Yeah. If, you, if you're using it for things that are not like publicly accessible. 
And I, I'm thinking just reserve it as an opportunity and then in the future figure out uh, what it might be needed for and how to pay for improvements there. Yeah, that is a good, yeah, that is a good thought because yeah, you could, that, it's not something again, you could leave unfinished. So you could just have it unfinished and you know, feature. I mean, I think if we did that, you'd want to get a soils report because, you know, although, although I mean, the good news is we're on top of the hill. So probably unlikely there's like standing water down there. It's very dry. I imagine it'd be dry being on top of the hill. So that's good. I mean, that, that's usually the concern in Seattle. If you have basements, you know, they're often filling up with water. Like I know down, you know, we are, we're not that far. We're on um, near Highland Park, the park itself. And, you know, it's very wet down here, you know, our crawl space. And I know this block is, I wouldn't recommend on our block digging down, but where the H pick is, is quite a bit, it's up on the knoll there. But I wonder if you can find the water table. <laughs> I don't know. Other people have thoughts about that, like building, you know, basements, and the any thoughts about would that be well, wet? There? I, my understanding, and Matt Matt Hooks could probably comment about that, or um, I think um, Greg Winger's on this call too. Um, uh, you know, there's a cost to the basement, of course, um, for sure. Uh, and you've 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 mentioned that yourself too, Matt. Um, Right, so I think it's a question of maybe we could cost it as a general, but I think maybe start, pretty soon we'll have enough detail here to start getting some construction estimates. So we could look at that as a line item in the context of the overall estimate and see how, you know, how much of a reach the community wants to do for fundraising. You know, we're trying to find the right amount of ambition that gets something built in the near term, you know, to keep the thing moving. Um, and then also leave maximum use for the future. It's probably more of a financial question than anything. Yeah, it does not, it seems like it does not really affect the design uh, of the uh, main floor and above. Right, right. And the, you could also have the elevator go down, you know, yeah. you could have the basement and the elevator could go down there. There's going yep. to be yes. an elevator? Yes. Yes, yeah. So, so with the mezzanine, you know, we, you would want that and the West Terrace, we would want that, you know, fully accessible to all people. So that would, um, that would mean an elevator and also just for hauling stuff up and down, um, you know, we would have an elevator. Um, you'd have an elevator here that goes to the upper level. I think, Kay, you had some initial cost estimates. Is that right? Was it like 15K? But you might be able to get an elevator, maybe. Uh, what, by Googling how much does an elevator <laughs> well, cost, true. which as a librarian, I'm very suspicious about. Yeah. But um, uh, the, it's, uh, they're saying like a simple elevator like this, 50 to 70,000 to install. Oh, but nice. there's also the concern from my perspective as a board, a person as a trustee in terms of affordability is a more concern to me is maintaining the elevator because you do have to have it maintained every year. You don't want someone getting stuck in there and things like that. So um, I think that kind of um, cost is probably 250 to 500 a year that you just have a maintenance contract with someone that comes out and takes care of the elevator. I don't think it's super prohibitive. We've actually identified a grant um, that specifically speaks to that. Um, we're too, I don't think we can get it this year, right this round, but um, there is, there is a funny funding out there to help with um, continuing accessibility. And as a person who, uh, I won't say how old I am, but I am an older club member now, I guess. <laughs> I don't want to be able to get upstairs. <laughs> oh, and uh, 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 Nikki's uh, also commenting, Laura Drake, I just wanted to reassure you that uh, there are storage rooms at, at, on both floors for storage of the tables. Um, and now uh, I'm gonna go to Barry again. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I did uh -huh. wanna just, um, I, cause I think it's really an important question, comment on Ju Judith's comment, are, are we building a community center or are we building 
what the, the bar venue keeps getting used. I like to refer to it as a performing arts or a celebration center. And I think it's very important because it does affect not only what you build, but how you raise funds for it. Mm. And to be quite honest, I think we have a number of community centers in the area, everything from Del Ridge to Salvation Army to other buildings, usually civically supported that are community centers. But what made HPIC unique was it was a place for performance and celebration. You know, it did have a standing stage. It hosted quinceañeras. I would hope it would host weddings, retirement parties, wakes, things that are important to people's lives. And from a fundraising standpoint, frankly, I think it's easier to raise, raise funds for that. When you're talking about performing arts space, I think you appeal to a wider net of people than if you're saying, hey, our neighborhood wants a community center. Honestly, I think it's what, I think we do have to keep in mind what makes us unique. And there is a lot that makes us unique. And I think that's what it is. So I think it's something you should take, even though it's awkward, you should take on head on and make that statement that, you know, Judah suggested. I think that's, that's an important step. Barry, I see a committee in your, in your future. <laughs> yeah. Media one. <laughs> uh, we got some more people. We're going to throw at you. But that's yeah. just, I just love that way you said celebration center. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that, um, that's just really profound, actually. Um, um, so, okay. Um, we um, Jody and I have to jump. Yeah, we've got, they got to go. Catherine, do you want to get the last question? I in? hope it's vacation. Yeah, um, sure. Can, also, you guys, we, we don't <laughs> mind staying on the call. So I think everyone can stay on, and I think Nikki. Yeah, we'll just let Matt go, and they're going to be able um, to see anything that we say. And now we can talk about them behind their back. Yeah, you can see them more what, you, what you really think, although it's but, reported. And okay, Nikki will be so here. So let's thank you, Matt. Um, thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you for all the work you've done so yeah. far. Thank you, you everyone, know, for your uh -huh. feedback. And uh huh. Yeah, super. We're super excited about where it's going, and and we're glad that these key questions are, are being surfaced and I think I think what the way that, that Barry described that we completely agree that that's kind of the key question the more we can identify like what's the what's the target of what the place wants to be then we can design to optimize to that target yeah. I think so. we have a lot of data or like data I hate that word <laughs> I think we've had a lot of opinions about that already we can yeah we can, we can distill that down I think yeah. All right. Okay. So yeah. thanks, everybody. Thank we're you. Looking forward yeah. to the next okay. one. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Bye. -bye. Yeah. We're back. We're we're still here, though, everybody. And I think Nikki's still here too. Nikki's the power behind the throne there. Uh, so if you he, have a wave, Nikki's uh, from the firm, and she's uh, been helping a lot with these drawings. So everything we say is going into her brain. So Catherine, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to to pile on a little bit to what Barry said. Um, if you think about from a marketing standpoint, because as you said, Kay, this the building has to pay for itself, right? So if you think about it from a marketing standpoint, one way to look at it is to is to turn the perspective and say, it, what design it what is the design eliminating as a possibility for use? So if if you want to be able to have a, a space that accommodates performance. Will that space also accommodate things like celebrations, quinceaneras, you know, yoga, all the other events versus if you want a place that is more of a sort of multi-purpose community center, does that eliminate the ability of being able to rent it out and use it as a performance space? Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it just helps to sort of turn the question around. Great. You're so smart. You always have a really good perspective. That's really Thanks. helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? Like, I think um, everyone's kind of pausing now to reflect because they've also taken the drawings away with them oh well I have a I have a what do you call it a 
I have a sort of PDF of it if we need to get back into it, but I don't have all the options. I just have a I kind of a rough. If you want, I have oh, it. Nikki, Nikki would be able to do that, right? Okay. Um, I can do that now. Yeah. Okay. We'll let you know. Uh, Laura, go ahead. You're muted, Laura. If this question, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? That was just said in our old building. Yes, we did all that. Mm -hmm. We had yoga classes. We had our classes. We had a permanent stage. We had community meetings. We had retirement parties, mine. We had all kinds of other things there. It, you can do all of that and still have a performance space. We did all that in the old building. I don't know what this big question is. Is it a community center? Is it a stage? It, it's all of it, just like it was in the old building. I think that Barry's point is that the marketing aspect is, or not the marketing, but just sort of how it's described is super helpful when seeking funding. Some funding is very- Yeah, tired. I love Barry's comment. I'm, okay. in total, I'm talking about the comment that was just made by a female. I don't know who it was saying, well, let's look at it backwards. Is it, if we do this, can we do this? Can we do this? We did all of that in the old building. Cool. We had the bit. Laura, the Laura, this is Catherine. You yeah. and I have met before. You borrowed a lipstick from me once at an audition. Um, <laughs> I was not saying that we should, I was not weighing in in favor of eliminating the performance space. I was responding to the folks who have said, uh, who have asked questions about the sort of identity of the space and its purpose and saying one way to look at it is, does does the design eliminate the use of something? And is that a choice you wanna make? If you're gonna choose a, a design that is more sort of open multifunctional community center space without a dedicated stage, to me that eliminates the possibility of using it for a real performance space. That's right. not something I would personally favor, right. but okay. that's one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's just that we, we, we did all of it at the old space. We had all of that there and with less space. Thanks. Yay. I love it when we all agree, actually. <laughs> Super. Anybody else that hasn't got a chance to talk? I'm always the one that has to say all this stuff. Um, people are saying thank you. Um, but is there any uh, any other follow ups that we that we're missing? Is there anything we're missing that we want to get in here? Because um, I don't really have to stay on the meeting until eight. Laura, is your hand still up or are you just waving? OK. <laughs> Monica, do you want to speak? Monica. I'm on a, I'm on a slow computer. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So I was just going to say, Kay, after our little gardening event this weekend, I would like, and this is nothing to do with the building or anything other than I think there needs to be a fund for garden tools and an area where people can access this. So we don't have to use our own tools. Okay. Uh, it, you know, I think, I think that we need to get a list, we need to get tools, we need to mark them, we need to organize them. That's a great so, idea, like a tool yeah. shed kind of that's accessible from the outside or something. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of bringing my own tools. I mean, I, bu I, I buy tools and I share them and I'm fine with that, but it's like, hey, <laughs> I think the club needs their own tools. Sure. It's like they have their own plates and cups and, you know. Or like brooms or what have yeah. you. Yeah, you know. yeah, it's part of the maintenance of the of the place, so anyway. No, that's a great idea. I know I, I definitely already spoke to the need to have a um, a, gen a sink in the janitor closet, which we never yes. had before, which was so yeah. annoying and so unsanitary. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't believe it. And um, so uh, it's great for you to bring up that practical concern. And, and I, I wouldn't, don't, we don't need to worry about where it is. No, but not if there's now. any other little things, because we'll figure that out. Yeah. If there's any other little aspects yeah. of the building that always hindered you functionally, yeah. this yeah. is a great time to say them. Right. Or chat them or something. Yeah. There should be allowance for that. And Laura, I love what you said. I totally agree with what you said, because that's that's what the how the club functioned in the past. And I think that's how it'll continue. You know. Thank you. 
And someone's also asking and uh, uh, PM to me about um, signage. And I'm, su I'm sure we'll have some, um, you're just chatting right just to me, not to the group or just, so you know, okay. Um, um, yeah, what couldn't we do, Donna? What is it that we couldn't do? Okay, thanks, Catherine. Thanks for coming. Um, Bye, Catherine. <laughs> um, thanks for the lipstick. Um, I, was, I was just really referring to like all the stuff that we used to say like, oh, I wish we had big windows and doors that went out to the patio. And I wish we could have a board meeting during a yoga class. And you know what I mean? Like things that we literally in, in the kitchen was always had, I mean, you know, 10 things. Right. Nicole was here, we would remember them. But, you know, I mean, we had a lot of wants and needs prior. And I just would hope that those get surfaced before we make final decisions, just because I think they were worth considering in terms of what Laura's saying is we, we did all this stuff. Can we just create a place where we can do all the stuff better than we had it before? Well, that's where I counted on everybody to fill out that survey and tell me what that is, right? Otherwise you're gonna be relying on me or whoever happens to think of it. Um, that's what we needed everybody. And that's why we had this meeting too. And if people have been really good about bringing stuff up, like we've had four of these meetings and suddenly we thought about the garden space maintenance, right? So I don't think it's too late to bring up stuff, but we are getting close to a window where it will become costly to, to not think of it now. So I just encourage everybody to really throw out those ideas now. Can we have a reader board instead of chalk? signs outside low to the sidewalk we have i think like that depends class? um on the um sign code for the for the city i mean we already had a huge meeting a subcommittee committee about that and there's restrictions about what kind of signage we can put on the building mm -hmm. just so you know it, but it has been considered yeah um, and we and will work. we'll just still try to consider how that would work but it's good to maybe have something that would be more easy to change that we wouldn't have to do. That yeah, the, the, you know, digital my problem, right? I digital know. kind. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if we're allowed to do that in a, in a residential zone. Tina. Uh, as long as you're asking about things uh, that just occur to us that we wished would, uh, remember on the stage, uh, there was my little paper signage with uh, the logo that it was just paper that I put together to make a uh, to make a, a, a mock up for the final uh, outdoor signage, if you recall, and I just stuck it up there and everyone it stayed because there ought to be an identity right behind the stage right behind the musicians or the performers or the speakers or whatever. So obviously that burned up. Uh, in the fire, I mean, to have something about that size uh, in, in in permanent material that we can uh, put up there, uh, so there is a identity inside the building as well as outside. Excellent, thank you. That. Every photograph, every uh, every event. Yeah, that was super cool. I think um, one idea that we were talking about with Matt too was the idea of somehow having the proscenium also be still a treatment that happens, even if there's not like the stage is not a box, for example, but maybe there's You're some talking sort about of- like a, an arch or something over the stage or is that what not, it- Maybe not even dimensional, I don't know. Maybe it's just along above the wall yeah. or something, but mm -hmm. it's like, a, it speaks back to that, yeah. you know, and, and makes the, um, Yes, Judith, I will get a chandelier in there if it kills me. Judith just ah. <laughs> to be a chandelier. So it's like, I've got one and I'm going to get it in there somehow. Hey, All Kay right. and Dina, can we put up those wonderful things you made, Dina, when we had our 100 year anniversary? All that history with those mm -hmm. those wonderful banners, those should be Didn't upstairs. They get burned up? Didn't they, they get they, burned up? They probably have to be reprinted. We have They'll them. just have to be reprinted. But I mean, how about up in the mezzanine on the walls up there is the history of Highland Park Improvement Club. I, those I were so they were beautiful. epic also, but I just didn't know if they would uh, ever appear again. Um, they were great. And they, they would tell anybody visiting that place could see the hundred year history that's up there. That's true. fabulous. Well, any any exposure they could get in the future that would uh, that would uh, be significant. Uh, obviously, I I would be very gratified. 
Oh, just don't were... draw out the files, please. Hang on to your files because we'll have can to. I, can I say something along those lines? And okay, also... but Corey also has her hand up. Okay, She's ahead of you. Uh, but go ahead. ahead. Okay, go ahead, Corey. <laughs> I see. I see to my comrade Monica. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. I can't see very well. These are the wrong glasses. But anyway, um, what I want to say is that I think that's critical, especially when I was thinking about the contrast to the to the old club, to what the new club is going to look like. I mean, my God, if you got a scuff on the wall at the old club, no one noticed it and no one cared. This is going to be a pristine, beautiful, clean place. And we do have to tell the history. And that comes in the photographs and even some of the photographs that, you know, from our lifetime too, as the ones that got burned up and melted in the fire. Uh, so I, 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 and I love Laura. I think that's a great suggestion. The banners. Totally, totally, totally. I think we have to tell the story of the club or no one's gonna get it. It's just gonna look like an ice box out there. It's gonna fade into history and no one will know. Nobody will know and no one will care. Yeah. Okay, Corey, your turn. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, just one thing. Yeah, I love anything that retains the history of a place So yeah right on about that. But uh, this is just a, a thought that occurred uh, when you're talking about comparing the old place and the new design. One nice thing that the old building had is that the main entrance, there was kind of like a little hallway there, a vestibule, so that you didn't just walk right in mm. to the activity. And it seemed uh -huh. like in this design, there were, unless I missed something, there was these glass doors, whatever, and it just goes straight from the Mm -hmm. straight outside into it so like yeah you know, i wouldn't want to be like doing a yoga class and have somebody open the cold rainy breeze in the sound of traffic <laughs> you know but, um and just you know and just we know how it is any any space or home if you don't have a mud room or a porch or a vestibule it gets really dirty and it's you get the cold breeze, you know, when you're in a restaurant and that happens, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of well, like the mud room. It's where, yeah, because yeah. that yeah. hallway got really dirty, didn't it? Uh, yeah, I also, for a reason. And without without having that, yeah, it looks beautiful, but you're going to, it's, it, you know, from a practical standpoint, it's not going to be as clean or comfortable, it seems like, in the, in the main space. Uh, I also need to mention that when we had events there, a lot of people... Uh, we're attracted to the space because of the privacy, right? So they're having a wedding or they're having, like you said, yoga, even yeah. um, dance classes, things like that. So I think there has to be the ability for privacy. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I'm all about the sliding glass doors and all that, but I think you have to consider the fact that people are renting for privacy, especially if half the time it's open to the public and half the time it's private, people are just going to wander up into some private event, which did happen, but it wasn't a big deal. But you know what I mean? Just so there's some kind of um, boundary. I guess physical boundary. Yeah, and in the in the past, on I remember they had we had the uh, the room separated with the curtains. You know. Yes, oh, yes. I love that and one. It, yeah. It'd be nice, Go maybe ahead. if they can incorporate some sort of a, like at the museum we have these movable walls. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't, I'm not saying a wall, yeah. but something to yeah. separate areas. It might be kind yeah. of nice to play with that idea. Yeah, and, I think privacy is yeah. Mm -hmm. And curtains, and if you're going to have curtains, get theater curtains like velvet curtains, you know, right. that are thick and that will absorb sound, not little cotton shits, you know. So um, we had good ones before, Miss Laura Drake. <laughs> yeah, they were good. Thick curtains. <laughs> yeah. um, also, I think that I wanted to tell Matt, maybe you could uh, relay this K or I could or something, but in order to create separate spaces in that big space, it's just like what you do on a stage, you do the lighting. So there has to be like a separate lighting for each of those areas so that when you're in that one little thing, you just turn on the lights for that one little thing and it's a cozy mm. little light and that's the little world of that space. Mm. Um, it, lighting is essential for mood, essential. And have it on dimmers, <laughs> dimmers, dimmers, dimmers. I agree, I agree. Lighting, very, very important. And very dimmer. important. Yeah. And to be able to dim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Elsa, yes, I love it. It's like, uh, what is a giant privacy screen? A curtain on the windows. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Coat hanging. Hey, yes. Michelle. Is that Michelle sitting with Judy? <laughs> hey, girl. Good to see you. Yeah. Um. So I'm, I'm getting on to eight, 
Seven forty. How are we doing? Mm -hmm. What's the timeline possibility? Like when when do you think this is going to start? Do we know? Um, I'm sorry, I can't speak to that exactly because I'm not the architect. But um, that I mean, the, one of the reasons that we're kind of like this is kind of fast in architect world, but we'd hope to like break ground in the fall. Okay. So we'd get the building ripped down in the summer. We but we have to get like all this stuff has to get amalgamated into the drawings. Then it has to get put into a level that we can get bidding on it from contractors. And then it has to go to permitting. So those, those are heavy labor intensive tasks on the part of the architectural staff. And um, so, but also we just, um, I just have this sense of urgency. I wanna get everything done, right? I wanna get it done. So I don't wanna wait around too much. Okay. Um, Okay, I, got a question. I don't want the perfect to be the enemy of the possible. Okay, the, the question I have that came up is, after they rip down the building, is there any idea of the time between the ripping down the building and then starting construction? Does that happen very quickly or does that all depend on people's schedules? I have no idea. Okay, just curious. I can't speak to it. I would be disingenuous. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it looks like folks are starting to sign off. So I want to thank everybody that's come. In case you have to go, feel free to go. But it's all great to see y'all virtually. Thank um, you, Kate. Th uh, Kay, thanks for, for thanks. Um, emceeing this, Kay. Mm -hmm. yeah. You betcha. Uh, can we have a teardown party? Absolutely. <laughs> you can write your name on the wall of the building as it's being ripped down. How about that? <laughs> can we take souvenirs? No, we're not going to give them out. We're going to make you pay for them so, <laughs> you know, you go. so we can raise money. What did you have in mind, Blair? Um, um, maybe a few of the planks of the floor. I don't know. Uh, if there's any maple left, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Scorched uh, maple. Yeah, scorch no, just like burnt. Uh -huh. You could do like what Kay did with the bricks. Have um, Bill cut little wood panels and then we could engrave things into them. Like the dates, HBIC, 1919 and nine, what it, 2019. 2020, when did it burn? Yeah. 2020, yeah. Wow. No, I think it burned in 2021. It was last year. Last year. It's only been a year, I can't believe it. So much has happened. Not even been a year. Wow. Okay. Okay, where are the martinis? <laughs> yeah, we're coming to your house, Laura. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> do, no, uh, do Judy. Judith is the uh, is the mixer. All right. <laughs> she makes her own bitters. I love it. Mm. <laughs> and any other comments from anybody? Matt, as usual, you had the good comments. I appreciate your all your feedback. Uh, you're quite welcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I would add um, that um, to to that area, um, we've all been there when the when the when the floor is packed, and just maximizing the floor space seems like a pretty important thing. Um, I know that it's trying to make the the building more accessible visually to the neighborhood and such, but. Maybe the maybe the existing outdoor space could have some enhancements that kind of draw people to to the space, um, even if it's like a covered area on the existing patio or or something that kind of draws you inward that way. But there's also a financial cost to building that um, that little area the the south uh, mezzanine so budget wise there's a cost uh floor space wise there's a cost and, um, i like that it's higher than the garden though i like that it's connected to the outdoor garden but it's higher i like that and yeah. if they made it smaller maybe you know maybe you could still work it it kind of gives a nice break up to the front of the building so it's not one solid thing but if you have the big doors that open up on the west side of the building to the to the existing patio that ties those areas together really nicely and uh, yeah I do like that switch too I think that's a little bit better make it smaller and make it a little kind of like put it all together right yeah. 
Plus, I wonder, I mean, you're also, you work in this trade too, but it seems to me, I, I think that kind of glazing is very, very, very expensive. And um, those big kind of window structures. Um, the, the window structures, but also um, having um, a change in the building envelope that, that cuts in to the space, all those angles, extra angles, ex different surfaces, different treatments, that all adds cost. So yeah, 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 yeah. Keeping wall, it simple if we can. A flat There's wall. so many fucking flat buildings in Seattle now. All those new buildings are flat. There's no there's no ins and outs. There's no architectural interest. Okay. But that's why, Laura, he's saying, is it because it, it saves money? I know, I know, but a little bit, a little bit of a cutout. Just give us a little something on the eye. No, but you, you have you have a um, a roof structure that's interesting. You have we do, yeah. Uh, if you have windows there that tie this interior space to the exterior, that that all adds mm -hmm. dramatically to what's existing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It couldn't. It could like <laughs> we have so little that adding anything will be great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. All right. AK, I mean, is it, I don't want to put Nikki on the spot, but since you're still with, uh, still with us, I was just curious if you can speak at all to uh, what are the next steps in terms of timing for uh, the organization? I think one of the biggest next steps is that we want to meet with the city to get a pre-submittal conference so that we could just ask those uh, questions about code and the existing foundation and those things. Um, and then obviously taking all this feedback and, and really going through it and make those updates to mm -hmm. the drawings and put it into um, you know, CAD and drawing, drawing them out. And I, I mean, I don't know exactly because I haven't talked to Matt about it yet, but those are, I mean, the talking to the, the city is the biggest thing, I think. Yeah. So. And we know that we know that uh, from our own club experience for as speaking from the history um, in 1960, we drew something that um, uh, is the coolest building ever and we took it to the city and they, they wouldn't give it to us because the parking it didn't meet parking code. Right. And so we never got that building built. Um, that sort of went down we went down this other road that we ended up with now. So just so we know like we that is like having that confidence is a is a really important uh, step and I think we need to take it you know now basically yeah. and fo folks also know that we've also had the lot surveyed already uh, by a professional surveyor or, or about to if he hasn't done it yet I don't know if they've completed that yet but that is scheduled as well because that's another uh, foundation piece hey can direct message me Blair I think this is a great idea and everybody that you reclaim some of the materials from the burnout and repurpose it as art or include it in the history display that we you know that maybe there's something we can take a part of the maple flooring or something and you know that the that the fire is a part of the history yeah, I like the uh, the photograph where the acrylic melted <laughs> yeah. like if that doesn't tell you how hot that room was man. Mm -hmm. Having been in the space after the fire, there was all kinds of things that really tugged at my heartstrings, just looking around. Um, there's all kinds of evidence of all this work and history, and there's, there's a tons of opportunities for uh, uh, all that kind of thing. Upstairs in the attic, I mean, man, it was, it was very emotional just to be inside of that after the fire. Love that idea. Couldn't agree more. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And you know me, I love to save stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. Okay. I'm hey, calling hey. it. I'm going to call you. it, everybody. Bye. All Bye. right. I'm going to stop this recording. All right. Leave you. Thank you, Kay. And wonderful Bye. job. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Kay. Good job, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Thanks for all your Bye. support. We can't do it without you guys.